Hey, so I just got this fantastic gift, and I said I was going to make a video about this Australopithecus skull and to try to place it into its proper evolutionary context. I just love the skull, and I would love to do justice to it by talking about the species it represents. This is a replica reconstruction of Australopithecus afarensis, which lived in East Africa between about 2.9 and 3.9 million years ago. And I've been thinking a lot about what to say about it. And there I have a dilemma, because I like to think about the big picture. And in this case, the big picture, especially since I haven't done any videos at all on Australopithecus, let alone on Australopithecus afarensis. The big picture is not so much about this guy, but really more about Australopithecus as a whole. So what is Australopithecus? Australopithecus is a group of extinct related species who lived in eastern and southern Africa roughly between two and four million years ago. They were upright walkers, in other words, bipedal, like us, but in many other ways quite ape-like. Their brains were only slightly larger than those of modern great apes like chimpanzees and gorillas. But there is something especially significant to human beings about Australopithecus. These species, while not part of our lineage, while not part of the Homo lineage, are the group of animals that are closest to the Homo lineage. And one species of Australopithecus was no doubt the predecessor species from which our Homo lineage diverged. Let's place them in their proper chronological place before we go on to discuss the big picture questions about Australopithecus. Here is a visual aid to better understand the relationships in time between the various hominin and ape species over time. Starting around seven million years ago, we see the at least partially bipedal species Sahelanthropus, Aurorin, and Artipithecus. And in blue, several Australopithecus species, which at the later, more recent end, are seen to overlap in time with early Homo habilis and Homo erectus. Missing from this diagram are the recent finds of a new Australopithecus species, Australopithecus sediba, which have been dated to around 1.9 million years. So what are some of the big questions that we would love to answer about Australopithecus? Well, for one, how did Australopithecus differentiate or diverge as a group from its ape-like predecessors? For another, which Australopithecus species is the direct ancestor of the human lineage? And how did that divergence occur? Third, were they obligate or habitual bipeds like humans? Or were they more of a transitional form, arboreal in part, spending a lot of time in trees like apes? Or were they primarily walking upright like modern humans? Unfortunately, these are all great questions which are hotly debated and to which we don't have definitive answers. Sometimes in paleoanthropology, as in life in general, if you can tell a story and it roughly hangs together, it can be very comforting. And there is a story that can be told about the origins of bipedalism in Australopithecus. It does look like climate change in Africa between 10 and 11 million years ago created more open areas between previously heavily forested regions, resulting in more areas not easily able to be traversed by travel within and along the trees. Did this open an evolutionary niche for more efficient walking apes to cross open areas to take advantage of resources not as easily reached? This is sometimes argued as a factor in the emergence of hominid bipedalism. That's cool that we have some change prior to the advent of bipedalism that might account for the evolutionary pressure to adapt to it. But linking this in any direct way to the origin of bipedalism is not possible. It's also clear that Australopiths were not the first species to show adaptations in the direction of bipedalism, as the seven million year old Sahelanthropus and Auroran tugenensis about six million years ago show bipedal adaptations. However, the opposable or graspable big toe 
useful in climbing, seen here in the chimpanzee, was absent in Australopithecus, while still present in the earlier partially bipedal species I just mentioned. The bipedalism of Australopithecus is still a topic of great debate between those who feel that Australopithecus still spent a lot of time in trees, perhaps to sleep or perhaps to evade predators, and those who think that Australopithecus spent the vast bulk of time walking upright bipedally. We don't actually know which Australopithecus species led to Homo, but they're the only candidates in existence. Their body adaptations, along with their coexistence with Homo in time and place in Africa, make it a virtual certainty that we emerged from an Australopithecus species. I fully intended to examine this afarensis skull this week. But in the interests of an orderly study of the big picture, I'm going to save the details of this skull and body structure of Australopithecus for next time. I hope that those of you who are counting on seeing that material here today will understand the mental organization that seems to rule my life. I mentioned the small brain size. At between 390 cubic centimeters and 515 cubic centimeters, of cranial capacity, the Australopithecus brain falls roughly within the range of the modern great apes like chimpanzees and gorillas. So what does that mean about the cognitive capacity of Australopithecus? Well, a few things. The notion of Australopithecus as bipedal apes is generally a good model to think about them. For example, if you're considering a question like, did Australopithecus have language? along the lines of human speech, it helps to recognize that they had the brain size of chimpanzees and gorillas. But it's not quite so clear-cut. In recent years, definitive evidence of stone tool use 3.3 million years ago by Australopithecus afarensis has been found. This certainly makes one take stock, because for years, stone tool use has been thought of as one of the defining characteristics of the Homo lineage. But now we know that Afarensis was using stone tools to butcher animals over a million years before the emergence of the human lineage. Findings like that remind us to be cautious about the conclusions that we draw from the limited evidence we have. So big picture. Australopithecus, bipedal apes, the likely predecessor of the Homo lineage. We'll look at some of the anatomical details next time. But I want to close with the Laetoli footprints in Tanzania. 3.6 million years ago, two hominins, Australopithecines, walk through a layer of ash that had settled on the ground after a distant volcano erupted. Raindrops dampen the ash, and evidence of the drops are still visible. While walking, the individuals pause and turn to the left before continuing. The ash hardens, and more volcanic ash is deposited, until a layer a few inches thick cover the prints. They fossilize, and eventually are uncovered by an anthropologist. These footprints are the first direct evidence of our ancestors walking upright. By direct evidence, I mean they're the first behavioral evidence, as opposed to evidence from fossil bones. These footprints are very similar to our own footprints. They show that the heel was the first part of the foot to strike the ground. The big toe was aligned with the other toes, and there was no divergent grasping big toe. And they left a deep impression in the ash, showing that each step ended with the toe pushing downwards. The feet also had central arches to help launch the body into the next step. How remarkable that a short walk like this was preserved from millions of years ago, and how poignant that we see the small private act of two individuals conducting this common and basic activity together. When I think of two footprints that bookend the vast span of human ancestry, beginning with a barefoot walk in Africa by human predecessors three and a half million years ago, and extending to contemporary human beings leaving the first footprints on a ground that is not on this planet, I can think of no contrast more telling than this. The picture itself conveys more meaning than can any words.
Be sure to subscribe. You can follow my Instagram. And thanks a lot for watching.